world where the US Navy's aircraft carriers are not confined to the seas, but transform into colossal flying machines, soaring through the skies just like the planes they launch. This extraordinary concept of a flying aircraft carrier has captivated military minds since the era of the world wars. Now, with cutting-edge technological advancements, the idea is once again gaining momentum. The United States is exploring the potential of these revolutionary flying carriers to maintain its dominance in naval aviation, and the moment of their creation may be closer than we ever imagined. Currently, the US already commands an impressive 25% of the world's aircraft carriers, with a total deck area more than double that of all other nations combined. At the forefront of this formidable fleet is the USS Ford class of carriers, which represent the pinnacle of naval power and innovation. Among these carriers, the USS Gerald Ford stands as a symbol of American naval supremacy, featuring numerous groundbreaking technologies. The USS Gerald Ford's most notable innovation is its use of nuclear power. The carrier is driven by two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, the most advanced maritime engines ever developed. These reactors harness the near-inexhaustible power of nuclear energy, enabling the carrier to operate for an astonishing 50 years with just a single refueling. With a top speed of around 30 knots, the USS Ford can swiftly navigate the globe, providing support to allies or engaging adversaries with unmatched efficiency. In addition to its cutting-edge propulsion system, the USS Gerald Ford is also equipped with state-of-the-art sensors, processing systems, and weaponry. This perfect fusion of intelligence and firepower guarantees the carrier's continued supremacy in naval warfare, setting a high standard for other nations to aspire to. As the United States continues to innovate with projects like the flying aircraft carrier, they reinforce their position as the world's foremost naval power. Other nations strive to keep pace by developing their own next-generation carriers, creating a new era of competition in naval aviation. In this rapidly evolving landscape, the USS Ford class carriers and their successors will undoubtedly remain unmatched in their capabilities for years to come. The construction of this exceptional carrier required the U.S. Navy to pause work on over 9,000 other projects. The USS Gerald Ford has a staggering 100,000-ton displacement and boasts 23 new technologies, three of which are considered groundbreaking. First, its nuclear power propulsion is driven by two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, allowing the carrier to operate for 25 years without refueling. With a top speed of 30 knots, the supercarrier can swiftly reach any nation, providing support to allies or confronting adversaries. Second, the carrier is designed to accommodate up to 75 fighter jets and UAVs, including the advanced F-35C Lightning II and the upcoming sixth-generation FAXX fighter. Lastly, the USS Ford features an innovative electromagnetic launch system and a resting gear, ensuring optimal aircraft launch and recovery capabilities. While the USS Ford-class carriers embody the epitome of traditional naval aviation, it is worth delving into the enthralling concept of flying aircraft carriers that has fascinated military strategists throughout history. If realized, these airborne carriers could potentially revolutionize military aviation and redefine the role of traditional naval carriers like the USS Gerald Ford. By examining the history of such proposals, including Boeing's ambitious 747-based concept, we can better understand the potential future developments in aircraft carrier technology and appreciate the ongoing efforts to push the boundaries of air and sea power. The United States is exploring the potential of these revolutionary flying carriers to maintain its dominance in naval aviation going beyond even the impressive capabilities of the USS Gerald Ford. The concept of flying aircraft carriers has been a fascinating topic for decades. With the introduction of the Boeing 747, an aircraft that revolutionized air travel by being more than twice the size of any other airliner before it, the possibility of creating a flying aircraft carrier seemed more attainable than ever. The general public was not the only group to be impressed by this feat. The U.S. Air Force, in 1973, recognized the potential of this groundbreaking aircraft and began to seriously explore the idea of transforming airliners into airborne carriers capable of launching and recovering fighter jets mid-flight. 
This innovative concept aimed to expand the reach and flexibility of air power, providing the United States with a strategic advantage in various military scenarios. The Boeing 747, a groundbreaking aircraft that drastically changed the face of air travel, caught the attention of not just the general public, but also the US Air Force. In 1973, they began to seriously consider the possibility of converting airliners, such as the 747, into airborne aircraft carriers. Once classified documents unveiled plans for utilizing a 747 to launch and recover fighter jets in mid-air. Envisioning a future where airborne aircraft carriers were stationed across the globe, the US Air Force believed these carriers could deliver air power to any location within a matter of hours by the 1980s. Boeing launched the 747 in 1968, and its massive size, dubbed the Jumbo Jet, changed the aviation industry. Juan Tripp, president of Pan American Airways and a visionary, believed that such a large plane could help alleviate airport congestion and lower the cost of flying, making air travel accessible to the middle class. Tripp's airline placed the first order for 747S, which he claimed would become a great weapon for peace by connecting the world and bringing people together. However, the Air Force saw other potential uses for the aircraft. The 747 and the newly introduced Lockheed C-5 represented a new breed of aircraft with their immense size, power, and range, presenting fascinating possibilities. The Navy's carrier force could already transport air power across oceans, but an airborne counterpart could reach deep inland areas and arrive at any global location within hours. The concept of an airborne carrier force wasn't entirely new, as the Navy previously had two airborne aircraft carriers, the USS Akron and USS Macon. Launched in the early 1930s, these airships were nearly the size of battleships, crewed by 60 men and protected by eight machine guns. These massive airships had internal hangars housing up to five parasite fighters that extended the airship's scouting range and provided defense. A trapeze system beneath the carrier allowed for mid-air deployment and recovery of the fighters. However, the enormous airships failed, with both destroyed in weather-related accidents within three years of their introduction. While this marked the end of airships, the idea of flying aircraft carriers persisted. In the following years, the Air Force continued to explore the concept as intercontinental bombers could now fly halfway around the world, but their fighter escorts could not. The proposal involved having bombers carry their escorts, but attaching a full-sized fighter jet beneath a bomber would limit its range due to increased drag. The solution was to create a small enough fighter jet to fit inside the bomb bay. However, the miniature jets proved too sensitive to turbulence during docking, and the idea was deemed too dangerous. Efforts continued into the 1950s, with experiments attempting to link full-sized fighters to bombers via their wingtips to extend the range of both aircraft. However, this docking method proved even more challenging and hazardous. The only successful implementation was to carry a single reconnaissance or nuclear strike fighter partially under a B-36, accepting the additional drag. By the mid-1950s, the newly perfected aerial refueling emerged as a safer and more practical method to extend aircraft range. The idea of an airborne carrier was revisited in 1973 when the 747 and C-5 became sufficiently large and powerful to deploy, recover, refuel, and rearm fighter escorts mid-flight. Tasked by the Air Force to investigate the concept of an aircraft carrier, Boeing turned its attention to the 747 due to its exceptional range and cruising speed. The proposed plan involved accommodating 10 specialized microfighters within the aircraft's pressurized hold. Suspended from an overhead conveyor system, these fighters would be positioned over one of two launch bays. To initiate the launch, a set of arms would lower the fighter into a bay, which would then be sealed and depressurized. Boeing estimated that two microfighters could be deployed in just 80 seconds. During recovery, a fighter would dock with a refueling boom and, if necessary, be reloaded with ammunition. The carrier crew could prepare a microfighter for a new mission in as little as 10 minutes. The aircraft would also carry fuel, armament, spare parts, and a crew of 44, including 12 carrier crew members, 14 squadron pilots, and 18 mission specialists. Additionally, the carrier would be equipped with sleeping quarters and a crew lounge. While it might seem challenging to fit everything into a single 747, the feasibility of the concept relied more on the miniaturized microfighters, which were designed to fit inside the carrier aircraft. With a wingspan of just over 5 meters 
and weighing about a third of a conventional fighter. These microfighters would be armed with 20 Minolimi cannons and could carry air-to-air -air missiles or bombs. Boeing believed these compact fighters could compete with aircraft like the MiG-21. Airborne carriers could operate from any large airfield and function as a battle group with supporting aerial refuelers and radar pickets, enabling the Air Force to reach any global location within hours, as opposed to the days or weeks required for a typical seaborne carrier force. However, the 747-based aircraft carriers never materialized, as the concept needed further development beyond the initial 60-page study. Although Boeing's engineers were confident that airborne carriers could be operational by the late 1980s, the Air Force did not pursue the idea. Rapid advancements in air combat during the 1960s and 1970s meant that a 747 carrier with specialized microfighters would likely become obsolete. While lightweight microfighters may have been relevant in the 1970s, they would have been outclassed by fourth-generation fighters by the late 1980s. Nevertheless, the Air Force hasn't abandoned the concept entirely. In the next few years, the Department of Defense will reveal a new carrier system, but this time, it will deploy unmanned drones. While not as imaginative as the initial proposal, this modern approach offers new possibilities for future air combat. What do you think about the idea of flying aircraft carriers? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to give this video a like to show your support as it means a lot to us. To